switch to your, this is what you said, I just didn't get it when you said it, that if you were using motor as an endpoint, as most people yeah. do, your, end, your threshold would be a lot higher than if you're using sensory, where your threshold would be lower. Is that right? It's the other way around. Okay. Motor nerves are easy to stimulate. Exactly. How does it work on that graph? Because on the graph, if you're selecting um, the, the, the higher duration, maybe that's a threshold. I think so it makes sense it's the other way around. Yeah, motor's easy to stimulate and Absolutely. you'll be using lower thresholds. Which we know. At, at any duration you'll need a lower threshold for motor, but the difference will be exaggerated with the shorter durations. So, we fudged around, does threshold correlate with success? Basically, not completely. You know, no, no big surprises. Does threshold correlate with needle position? Now, if you've got a threshold of 0.5, does that mean it's 2 millimetres from the nerve, right on the nerve? Yeah. What does that mean? And people have mucked around with trying to position a needle right next to the nerve using direct vision, ultrasound, paresthesia, anything else. And when they think the needle's next to the nerve, then they turn the stimulator on and see what happens. Um, and probably the best known study of this was done, it was published in 2001, where they were doing axillary blocks. And they put the needle into the axilla until they got paresthesia. I've got electric shocks down my arm. And then they said, that means we're right next to the nerves. Now we'll turn the nerve stimulator on and see what threshold we get. Because the question was, you know, at what point does the threshold mean you get a decent block? And this was their graph. So these were all their patients. And this is the amount of current they needed once they turned the stimulator on to get a motor response. So they've used paresthesia to position the needle next to the nerve. Then they turn the stimulator on, and this is what they found. And um, Choice published this out of Canada in 2001. And the first thing they found was that three quarters of the people that they tested, these were volunteers, needed 0.5 milliamps or less. So if your needle is right close to the nerve, Three quarters of people need 0.5 or less. That that kind of goes with what we, what we kind of what we know already. Um, the median current they needed was about 0.17. Now, if we accept that paresthesia means nerve contact, this is about the only evidence to support using 0.2 as your cutoff threshold. Because here's a study that says if the needle's touching the nerve, this is the median current you need to produce a motor response which is quite close to 0.2, which most people take, and certainly manufacturers take, as the lowest acceptable current. If you can get less than that, you're probably too close to the neural. They had a huge range. Some people with paresthesia, when you turn the box on, needed a, up to 3 milliamps to get any kind of motor response. And it was actually something like a quarter of people needed more than that even if you were allegedly next to the nerve. So this study caused an awful lot of trouble. Vast amounts of letters and editorials and huffing and puffing and whatever. The main messages really was that 0.5 is about right. If you accept that these needles were right next to the nerves, this is about the right threshold to take as your minimum threshold. Below that you're too close. But can you think of probably the major criticism of the study? It, it's the one thing that's criticised for more than any others. They're relying on paresthesia, which is a slightly painful sensation. Because you, you're right, what, the, what, what they couldn't understand was this massive variation. So what, what are the possible explanations for massive variation? You've got the subjectivity of paresthesia. Yeah. You know, one person's paresthesia is not somebody else's. But they, I, I, they, they picked a bad nerve when they went after the auxiliary nerves. 
And the biggest problem people had with the study was that those nerves are awful wriggly. And just because you had paresthesia for a few seconds, by the time you got the box turned on and turned up, how do you know that the needle hasn't moved three or four millimetres or the nerves moved or whatever? So that was their biggest problem. You know, they assumed that paresthesia meant nerve contact. But then they had to explain this enormous variation. Either it's real or there was something else going on. People have done the same thing. Um, and the message with ultrasound is if you march a needle right up to the nerve with ultrasound, there's an enormous variation in how much current you need. Some people you can turn it up to two or three milliamps and you know I mean, it's virtually intraneural and you get absolutely nothing out of them. And other people are, are completely as you'd expect, you know, 0.3 milliamps and you've got a great twitch. Have you, I mean, do you still use nerve stimulator with ultrasound when you're, when you're blocking? Have you noticed that you can, with some patients, you can put the needle right up close to the nerve on what you think is a sensible current and you get no twitches at all? I mean, it, to me, if the needle looks in the right spot, even if I haven't got a twitch, I just get on and do the block. But the early studies from the early 2000s showed that if you march a needle right up to a nerve using ultrasound, there's a huge variation. In some studies, 75% of patients did not get any twitches at all of what would be considered sensible currents. In fact, if I go on to the bottom study, which is what we're talking about here. Um, this was another paresthesia study, where they looked at 20 patients having interscaling blocks. They got paresthesia. They were in the right place because the block worked. And only 25% of their patients had twitches with the nerve stimulator at sensible currents. So 75% of these patients had no decent twitches at what you consider sensible currents, even though they got paresthesia implying nerve contact and they must have been in the right place because their block worked very nicely. No twitches at all. In terms of ultrasound, this was done in volunteers where they used ultrasound to approach nerves in the brachial plexus and they turned the nerve stimulator on with visible nerve needle contact. And the minimum current they could get away with was 0.36. Nobody got motor responses at less than 0.36. But there were some patients who had absolutely no response to one and a half. And this, this is repeated again and again and again. Nerve contact on ultrasound does not equal a twitch at sensible nerve stimulator settings. And this is where the idea came from that you know the most useful endpoint is not the threshold of the stimulator, it's what the spread looks like when you inject it. We're all used to that now. But you know, at, at the time this came out, this was pretty much a revelation that you know you could rely a lot less on the thresholds that you were getting, and you could rely a lot more on what the spread looked like. So how close is close enough? 0.5, you don't need to be any closer. How do we avoid a general injection? If I've never met you before in theatre, it's the first question I ask you. I'll give you a blank piece of paper. One, two, three, four, five ways to avoid intranormal injection just using a nerve stimulator. And then I put my feet up. Smile quietly. I mean, if you were teaching an SHO how to use a nerve stimulator, you say, I want to, I want to see you do these steps every block. One, two, three, four, five ways to avoid intranormal injections using a nerve stimulator. From what we've talked about so far, what would you go for? Pain. So pain? Mm -hmm. Okay. Low pressure injection. Low pressure injection. Going slowly. I'll put that as six. Threshold. Twitch should disappear. Fifth one? The fifth one's not obvious. We haven't really talked about the fifth one. Yeah, stop. Okay. So, if ever you're teaching, they're not called SHN, they're called what? S FY ones and twos. And, um, those are the five rules. Watch the patient whether they're awake or asleep. If they get pain at any stage, serious pain, stop. Okay. The threshold should be above 0.2. 
the twitch should disappear as soon as you start injecting. There should be low resistance injection. I put DIY whenever I can, I like to do it myself. I don't believe I just said that, okay. Um, if I can, I like to just be able to feel the pressures myself. Okay. If I, if I can't manage it with my hands, then I have to let someone else do it. But it, yeah, certainly with the deeper blocks, where you're not worried about holding the needle quite so tightly, um, you can do your own injections. And if it gets weird, just stop. Um, I was trying to do a block a few years ago, and I was doing a femoral block without ultrasound, um, with just a nerve stimulator, and I was really struggling. I could feel the part there. struggle, 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 struggle. Um, I'd asked for two milliamps to be set on the machine, and I was working with an ODP whose view was, it's for me to know and you to find out. You do the needle, I'll do the box. <laughs> so after struggling for several minutes, you know, what's the obvious question to ask? Yeah, what was it set at? 0.2. Yeah, 0.2. Um, and you know, that was the question of if you got, so I, it was getting weird, so I just stopped. Um, as it was, I, I, I was able to understand why and we just carried on. But there are days when it's gone weird, I haven't understood why and I just quit. Okay. Um, most problems I've seen with local anesthetic injections in the literature have come from people pushing a weird position. Things got weird and they kept going. So the threshold should be above 0.2. Where's my evidence? Well, the book says so. Is that enough? Probably. Um, that's about the only bit of evidence out there that supports the idea that 0.2 is about the right minimal threshold because our median current with nerve contact is 0.17. So if we're just off the nerve by a millimetre, it'll be more than that. The reason it's quite difficult to do, I mean, the obvious study is to do some animal work where you open, you know, open the tissues, expose the nerve, put a needle on and check the current. See what it is. The problem you've got with that is that there are things going on in the whole system. Most of the current from the needle doesn't flow through the nerve. It comes straight back to return electrode through the tissues. It's called current channeling. Um, and if you open the tissues and put the needle on the nerve, it's not acting anything like the way it acts if, if the tissues are all closed over it. So it's actually quite difficult to design a system you can experiment with where you can get see what the effect is of real nerve contact. Um, once or twice when surgeons have exposed nerves for a variety of reasons I've actually thrown a needle at them and said here touch the nerve and let me turn my box on and it's generally been around about 0.35 but that's just the nerve that's just the needle directly on the nerve with no surrounding tissues which is um, an abnormal condition that you know, we don't normally use um, why does the twitch disappear as soon as you start injecting The pushing thing pushes the nerve away, and the distance increases. Okay, that was good for 1984, <laughs> and um, Prithi Raj sorted this out a bit in 1984. So this is what they did in 1984. They didn't know whether it was the rapid effect of the local anaesthetic numbing the membrane immediately, which doesn't seem plausible, or whether it was the mechanical displacement increasing the distance, which you guys were talking about or whether it's to do electrophysiology. Um, what Pretty Raj did is he put a needle into a patient, got a twitch, and then he injected either local or saline or air. What happens with all three? What happens to twitch? If you inject local or saline or air with a twitch, what happens to the twitch? Does it go? Does it stay? It goes with local and saline. Okay. Twitch goes, twitch mm. goes, twitch goes. It didn't matter what you injected, the twitch disappeared. Sadly for him, he didn't choose dextrose. If he'd chosen 5% dextrose, he'd have got a different answer. But he didn't do that. He chose saline or air as his alternatives to local. Um, and for a long time, that was the idea, was that um, it's 